Welcome back, everybody, to Moon Sports. My name is James Erdman. Today, this is our final straight up standard first round mock draft as the draft is just a week away or a little over a week away from the NFL draft. There will be a draft video content coming each day leading up until the draft, along with other videos sprinkled in there. We're back on the video grind, but this is the final straight up standard. Normal first round mock draft where I'm picking one through 32, no trades, no nothing. Two round mock draft will be the day right before the draft. There will be a mock draft with trades in there, and there'll be some player evaluations and player rankings. So, a lot of good, juicy draft content coming your way. And of course, a draft spectacular. Obviously, can't wait. But let's get off with our number one overall pick, and I think it's Aiden Hutchinson. And I honestly think with the rumors flying around right now that the first four can kind of be a lock. But I'm thinking offensive tackle, but I looked at it, I looked at it this way. If the Bengals select Panay Sewell, they probably don't go to the Super Bowl. So I don't think offensive line is like that one Super Bowl piece, per se, like Jamar Chase was. So I thought of it this way. Will an edge give the Jags more of an impact, or will the offensive tackle give more? And I think offensive line definitely needs to be addressed. They also have the pick number 33. And if you look... According to just the Draft Network's offensive line rankings, Tyler Smith, Kenyon Green could more than likely be there. I mean, Bernard Perryman, Trevor Penning, Daniel Falale could be there as well, which is all solid players and all you could make arguments improvements. So I think Edge right there is the right pick for them. And then I think Trayvon Walker has boosted his sex so much. Kind of reminded me of Michael Parsons. I don't know if I'm saying he's going to be as good as Michael Parsons. But the athleticism and the ability to rush the pass for the Lions, which the Lions desperately need, is what they need there. This, however, this pick right here, some are saying Gardner, some are saying Malik Willis. I'm probably going to go Ika Maquanu right there. Uh, I Evan, Evan Neal's my number one tackle. He is, I'm going to be honest. Uh, but just with the rumors flying around right now, I think Ika Maquanu is that. And then I think this is Kayvon Thibodeau. I think this could honestly be the first four. I think number one and number two are locks with Ian Hutchinson or Walker. I think those are going to be either player one and two in this year's draft. And then I think Kayvon Thibodeau is going to go a little higher. I doubt he makes it past the Giants' second pick. Um, And then Malik Willis, obviously, a quarterback can go high. Sauce Gardner is going to be great no matter where he goes. I think Evan Neal to the Giants, though, is the right pick there. They're trying to invest so much. An offensive tackle, and hopefully Andrew Thomas continues to take the steps up that like he needs to be taking. But Evan Neal at Alabama, they need another right tackle. I think Evan Neal can play right tackle. Side in, just be is fine. So Evan Neal right there. Um, and then I got Malik Willis to the Panthers. Matt Rule is coaching for his job, right? There are already talks about him being fired, and I think you know offensive line, offensive tackle could be the right pick there. But if this staff is coaching and fi and hiring for their jobs, they need to go out and be aggressive and maybe find the piece that could save their job. I don't think Charles Cross is that piece. I think it's Malik Willis. I think they need to be aggressive at the quarterback position. If the best quarterback available is Malik Willis, which it looks like he is, looks like he's got the higher upside, you know, which is what teams draft on is higher potential. And the combine made Malik Willis very, very much the favorite quarterback to go in this year's draft, then yeah, absolutely, you got to take Malik Willis right there. So, I got Malik Willis, his first quarterback off the board, going to the Carolina Panthers. This is Sauce Garner for me. James Bradbury, we don't know if he's going to even be playing with the Giants next year or if he's going to stay on the team through all 17 games next year. That team will need a number one corner to help with a very solid defense when it's Firing on all cylinders, which we've seen it can be. I think Sauce Gardner is that pick. You sturdied up the offensive line for Daniel Jones, which the team believes in somehow. Get Sauce Gardner on the other side of the field. Get you a number one true lockdown corner. And my pro comp for Sauce Gardner is Richard Sherman. I think it's a perfect comp right there. And when I compare them, it's just a comparison. I'm not saying he's going to be as good as prime Richard Sherman. I don't think anyone can be as good as prime Richard Sherman. But Sauce Gardner has the potential to be a very, 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 very good corner in this draft. This is an edger receiver. And they need defense so badly. And they're signing a bunch of lower tier receivers that I think in the second round you can get. 
a pretty quality receiver. Joan Dotson could easily be there. Traylon Burks could easily be there. Sky Moore could easily be there. Christian Watson could be there. I think they could all fit in. So I think when you have a chance, ch ch <clears throat> when you have a chance to get a premier edge rusher on the defense, which is what you need to do here, I think that's Jermaine Johnson right here. So there is the pick for the Falcons. They've been needing edge. They don't really evaluate edge as much as I would like them to. <laughs> as because I'm a I'm from Bama. Right, but I don't have a football team, so I've always kind of like adopted the Falcons. I've adopted the Titans. I'm always a Packers fan, but I've adopted those two teams. I'm always kind of rooting for them. I always like the Falcons. Uh, this team's going to be bad. Get some edge rush. Get some guys in there that can just be a uh, mainstay on your defense. Well, it's come because who knows if Grady Jarrett is even, you know, still going to be as good as he is. So Seattle Seahawks now. Who are we taking here for the Seahawks? So no Malik Willis, which is what I would have taken there. You could go Kenny Pickett, but I don't think they do. I think they try and sh I think they try and shore up that offensive line for Drew Locke. And they get Charles Cross. Uh, uh, yep, they get Charles Cross right there. Uh, I they need offensive line. Their offensive line is so 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 poor. It's not even funny. If you want to even give Drew Locke a true chance to maybe succeed in Seattle, you gotta get him help on the offensive line. So I like the pick right there, Charles Cross to Seattle. Jets are up now. I think they take Kyle Hamilton with this pick. Best player on the board. Uh, losing Marcus May hurts, but bringing in Jordan Whitehead is solid as well. Getting another athlete on that defense. A guy who can be like a box safety in there, which is what a lot of people are thinking he's doing. There's a lot of people like down on Kyle Hamilton. I think Kyle Hamilton is super talented. He plays really fast. He knows the defensive side of the ball really well. Robert Sala is going to fall in love with this guy. If he's there at 10, I think the Jets 100% pull the trigger and take Kyle Hamilton. Washington up now. Do they go corner or receiver? They have Scary Terry. And when Curtis Samuel is healthy, he's a very, very talented player. And again, you can get some pretty talented receivers in the second and third round. What you can't get is a corner like Derek Stingley Jr. to help sure up a weak secondary that kind of held your defense back. They could go safety here as well. If Kyle Hamilton goes past the Jets and the Jets are thinking we want a receiver, I think Hamilton goes to Washington. Instead, I think they need to focus on that secondary very much so. Because again, when Curtis Samuel is healthy, he's a solid player. Scary Terry is the top five receiver in the league. I said it. He's that good. So I like... I think the offense could be competent if they get a, the right quarterback, which it seems like uh, they did. They're trying to at least with uh, Commander Carson. So the Commander's taking Derek Stingley Jr. right there. If he can play up to freshman Derek Stingley Jr., who was already the number one corner in this class, all in his freshman year, then yeah, I think they got a pretty pretty talented corner right there. The Vikings are up now, and I don't think you take a receiver, even though like the best players on the board right now are receivers. Um, but the offensive line wasn't terrible last year. They're saying safety is the number one need. I don't think it's safety. I think you could easily just make the argument for Devontae Wyatt right here, to Jordan Davis. Maybe you take a Kenny Pickett, try and get a little more aggressive at the quarterback position. But at the end of the day, is Kenny Pickett going to be better than Kirk Cousins in his rookie year? Probably not. So I think interior defensive line is huge, and I'm taking Jordan Davis right there. The edge... The edge could be fine. Daniil Hunter, Everson Griffin, those are really solid edge rushers. Get Jordan Davis up there in the middle, help out the run defense a little bit. There you go, I like to pick. So the Texans now, with the trade with the in the Deshaun Watson trade, I think they go get another big time weapon in Garrett Wilson. I like Garrett Wilson a lot. Uh, he's better of the Ohio State receivers, the two Ohio State receivers. Uh, I really outplayed. Chris Olave during the season. Garrett Wilson's got everything you would want in a wide receiver. Uh, he gets another big-time weapon for uh, Big Neck Mills. <laughs> Davis Mills and his long-ass neck. They need another big-time receiver. Brandon Cooks is very good, very underrated receiver. But, gay, yeah, the more weapon, which I'm trying to get the Packers to understand here. I'm really trying to get them to understand that. The more weapons in this new league, the better. You can't just rock out with Brandon Cooks and call it a day. Like, Green Bay probably couldn't just rock out Adams and call it a day. But thankfully, they had Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon to carry the run game. Texans really don't have that with Rex Burkhead and Duke Johnson uh, back there for running backs. So, Garrett Wilson out there. Pretty good pick right here. Then I got Devontae Wyatt going to the Ravens. I've mocked this a couple of times now. I, I usually try and switch it up a little bit. But Devontae Wyatt, they need 
interior defensive line help. The defense really needs help altogether. With some certain rumors going around, I think they could solve receiver position very well. But Drake London right there could have been a nice fit. Um, but now here we go, Philly, and I'm giving them Jameson Williams. Over the top presence with Devontae Smith pairing up the Alabama receivers. Absolutely love to see it there. It's a huge pick. Keep the offense growing. Keep giving Jalen Hurts weapons. Miles Sanders is on the declining end of running backs now. You know, his stock has really fallen. But if, you know, you were wanting to have Miles, Gar Miles Sanders to have a bounce back season, I would think it'd be this year with Jameson Williams taking the top off the defense. New Orleans Saints now up. I'm going to take Trevor Penning here um, because losing to Ron Armstead is going to hurt that offense in more ways than people realize. And you need an offensive lineman that can play aggressive, get physical. That's Trevor Penning. So I got Trevor Penning going to the Saints right there. Uh, Chargers usually where I mark Trevor Penning, uh, but I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> With the players on the board, I think this could more than likely be a trade back spot. I mean, they fixed defense. Edge could be a fun one. Myth Force could be easily a fun one, I feel, as well. Devin Lloyd, the linebacker, which I'm kind of feeling. It might be a reach, but I'm feeling it. I'm taking Devin Lloyd out of Utah to go to the Chargers. I don't see anyone mocking that so far. Hey, wait, what's that? What's that to love about Devin Lloyd? Let's look at his profile, huh? The size, 6'3", 237. I'm not remembering his 40 time, but he's an, I know he's a great athlete. His team, any, every team can use some middle linebacker help. To help stop with the run game, I think Devin Lloyd can be that. This team needs a captain on this defense. And he's not going to be the captain. Middle linebacker, you know, the captain of the field, like a Luke Keekley. He's got to have Khalil Mack. He's going to have J.C. Jacks help him out. He's just got to be there and be a solid run stopper, which I think Devin Lloyd can be. And help pass coverage as well. So do the Philadelphia Eagles double up on receivers right here? Mm, I don't think they do. I do think they go Andrew Booth Jr. However, the corner back's position does need help besides Darius Slay, who again is getting older and regression is going to set in. Although Darius Slay is still a very solid player. Get someone younger he can mentor. Good pick right there, I think, for Philadelphia. And this is where I go Chris Olave. They love Ohio State wide receivers. They love just Ohio State in general. They do need a receiver. Because, again, Michael Thomas hasn't played in a while. Alvin Kamara, we have no idea his legal situation. So you do need another big-time weapon for Jameis Winston to throw to. Chris Olave can be that. Because I really want Green Bay to try and get Chris Olave. Doesn't look like that's going to be happening. Here we go. Uh, Kenny Pickett out of pit. I could switch up, say Desmond Ritter. Um, but higher floor, I what, what more is there to say? The quarterback, Kenny Pickett, is best quarterback on the board at this point. So I like Kenny Pickett there. Usually this is my uh, this is usually this is my Devin Lloyd uh, spot here, but he went to the Chargers. So Patriots are up now. I do think they need corner. I think Trenton McDuffie, hit best corner on the board. <laughs> they need corners so bad, and I've mocked Roger McCreary so many times because he's a true man corner, and I watched him so much, and he knows really how to shut people down. Carol Lom could be good. I think Roger McCreary is better than Kyler Gordon, but that's besides the point. Trent McDuffie, though, he would be the best cornerback on the board. Uh, great athlete. Really does it all. So, Trent McDuffie getting out of there. The point is, this team needs corners so bad. Malcolm Butler, they got back, which is, again, not the greatest because he wasn't good last year at all. So, Trent McDuffie, this team needs corner. They get a corner. Green Bay goes Drake London. Uh, what more is there to say? Drake London is a phenomenal big guy who has the speed, he can break all sorts of tackles. Drake London is just kind of the all-around package, and I think Aaron Rodgers would make really good friends throwing to him and Sammy Watkins and Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. Again, not the greatest wide receiver room in the world, but he had Devontae Adams in there, you know, maybe we'll see what happens. Um, right? It would be so nice to have a big-time receiver like Devontae Adams to help out with Drake. It's fine. Amari Rodgers still in there as well, so... And getting Drake London right there, pretty good pick for the Green Bay Packers. I'm going Zion Johnson here to help out with this team's offensive line, to help give more protection for Kyler Murray, because you can never have enough of it. This is my Dax Hill pick. I have liked Dax Hill for a while, a versatile safety back there, uh, who, you know, Cowboys need safety. They really do, because Keanu Neal switching back to safety is fine. However, you're going to need more help back there. Need more help back down the defense to help out with Michael Parsons. Uh, Randy Gregory was there. Then he left. 
The Dexter Lawrence is going to be there. I like Dex Hill to move around on that Cowboys defense. Here we go. Buffalo Bills. He uses Kenyon Green, but I'm switching it up. I am switching it up, right? One week for the draft, I'm taking Kenneth Walker Jr. Kenneth Walker the third, excuse me, not Jr. Kenneth Walker is a beast. Was a Heisman favorite until they got blown out by Ohio State. Kenneth Walker is so good. He was so good for Michigan State. He can kind of do it all. And this team's what is this one offense missing? Let's look at Buffalo Bills offense. Well, tight end Dawson Knox is pretty damn good. And they got OJ Howard, so it's a pretty good tight end room. Uh, quarterback, Josh Allen, top five quarterback in the league, and he's not five. He's probably like four. Okay, but Josh Allen is super good. Wide receiver. Oh, I don't know. Stefan Diggs, very great receiver right there. Well, who's the second receiver? Gabriel Davis caught four touchdown passes in the AFC Divisional round. So you've got weapons there for it. What is the one position that seems to be lacking for this Buffalo Bills team? Running back. So I think they take a chance on running back and get Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is so, so, so good. Or you go Tyler Linderbaum and help boost the running backs you already have. Which either way, either one is fine. So up next, we got the Tennessee Titans. And, you know, if A.J. Brown is actually leaving them, then their wide receiving room with Robert Woods and that's it is not going to be great. However, he hasn't left yet, so I don't think receiver here is the smartest pick. I think you could take quarterback here, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to take Nicobe Dean out of Georgia. Nicobe Dean really led one of the best one of the best defenses in college football history. Nicobe Dean, Jordan Davis, Devontae Wyatt, they were all over that defense. So, I like Nicobe Dean a lot out of Georgia. Tennessee needs linebacker to help boost up that defense. You know, the defense really wasn't the problem in the playoffs last year. Quarterback was, but I think Ryan Tannehill still got it. So, yeah, I'll get to Kobe Dean. Because remember, they were the one seed last year. Now they were the, they were a bummy seven seed that just made it in. They were the one seed. I know Ryan Tannehill threw some pretty bad picks there, but I don't think you take T Desmond Ritter right there. Although this could be similar play style, you know, Derrick Henry. But I like to Kobe Dean right there. Bucks. Uh, yeah, the offensive line lost some retirements, and I tie under bump. Shoot, he could be the best offensive lineman in this draft class, period. I know he's a center. Um, you can easily move him over because you got Ryan Jensen right there. And he could play guard. Dial in the bomb. Great pick right there for the Bucks. And the rich get richer. Isn't that nice? Packers with their original pick. Do they double up on wide receiver? I don't think you do. I don't think there's a need to anymore. If they didn't sign Sammy Watkins, I would say maybe. But also, this team does need more edge depth. I do like... George Karloftis, but I am going to switch it up. I'm going Arnold and BK. Take him. Arnold and BK. <laughs> edge rusher. Team needs edge depth. Like, because Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary are fine edge rushers, but getting edge depth, which is what we need, we decided Whitney Merciless. He then retired. So I like Arnold and BK out of Penn State. He's a fifth year senior. Like, he was, he's an older player. So he's going to be ready to play. He's going to be more ready than any some of these other project edge rushers you can maybe take at the back end of the first round, like Carl Loftus. He's going to be older. He's going to be more ready to play. So I like that pick there for the Green Bay Packers. Back-to-back -back picks right here for the Chiefs. I think they go George Carl Loftus because they do need edge rusher help. And then I'm giving them Traylon Burks out of Arkansas because they do need receiver. Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, McCole Hardman, Juju Smith-Schuster, Traylon Burks. You know, they just need another receiver. Because MVS didn't really take off in Green Bay. He won the star wide receiver out there for Green Bay. He never really, you know, there was moments for him, but he never really found the overall consistency. McCole Hardman's kind of the speedster Tyreek Hill replacement. Juju Smith-Schuster is kind of going to be your slack guy. You need a big-bodied receiver out there. I think that's what Traylon, Traylon Burks can be. Maybe they trade up to get Drake London, which I could be too. But at 6'2", 225, it's going to be tough to, for a corner to cover him out there. He's going to be a big body receiver. He's got amazing jump ball skills. I like Traylon Burks a lot to the Chiefs. So the Bengals are in need of... No, it's offensive line. It's always going to be offensive line. Kenyon Green. They made a bunch of good offensive linemen signings. And if they want to take out the positions, they could. However, getting more offensive line is what they need. Now, the Lions are back up. Lions got a lot of picks. They'll have this one, they'll, and I'm pretty sure they'll also pick 34. 
Unless they traded that away, which I I don't think they did. So they could honestly wait a second because I don't think the Jags are going to be taking quarterback. So you don't need to take Desmond Ritter right here. However, you do need more help <laughs> on the defensive side. And I'm going with Roger McCreary at Auburn. I was talking about earlier in the video, and that's my final pick. Because Jeff Okuda, you know, he wasn't balling out. And then he got hurt. So who knows how he's going to be off injury. So, yeah, I like corner Roger McCreary there, giving some boost to secondary, which we all thought Jeff Okuda would be. He has not been great so far into his early career. You know, it's always time for him to bounce back, and I hope he does bounce back. I liked him coming out of college. But Jeff Okuda hasn't been the greatest number, uh, what was he, number three overall selection. He was, either one or, he was either two or three. So, not, you know, but Roger McCreary out of Auburn. True man shutdown corner is what this defense needs. And there is the first round. Started off with Aiden Hutchinson. Like I said, I think the first four could be a lock. I think the first five, if they have in this order, is a lock. Going to six through ten, Malik Willis, I like the pick. Sauce Garner, because we don't know what James Bradbury's doing. Jermaine Johnson, I like. They can get a re very talented receiver in the second round, which you'll see in the two-round mock draft coming out the day before the draft. Man, look out for it. Seahawks going Charles Cross, Jetsky Kyle Hamilton. Derek Stanley Jr., Jordan Davis, Garrett Wilson, Devontae Wyatt, Jameson Williams. They go Trevor Penning, Devin Lloyd. This is kind of the reach pick, I know, but, you know, it's it's hard to find holes on that defense now. Uh, another corner could be nice. Maybe another safety because Derwin James can't seem to stay healthy, which truly sucks. So talented player. Um, but Devin Lloyd on the linebacker spot could help out. Andrew Brooke Jr., they do the corner. Kenny Pickett, Chris Olave. My Packers get Drake London. I like Zion Johnson a lot. Cardinals, Cowboys get Dax and Hill. The Bills taking Kenneth Walker. I love that pick right there. It's my favorite pick of this entire mock draft. Besides my Green Bay Packers getting Drake London, who would be phenomenal. Um, but Kenneth, again, where's the hole in that offense besides running back? The running game hasn't been anything besides Josh Allen. It's been the problem like that now for two years. So getting Kenneth Walker right there, what it needs to be. Nicobe Dean, Tyler Linderbaum, Arnold MBK, George Kalatis, Tyler Burks, Kenyon Green, and Roger McCreary. So that is this final Final straight up standard first round mock draft. I'm gonna have other mock drafts in there, but a little bit of twist. It's final straight up one through thirty-two. No gimmicks, no nothing. So there it is. Let me know what you guys think of this down below. If you're excited for all the draft content down below, and make sure to like and subscribe for more draft content coming your way. And be on the lookout for the draft spectacular coming out the day after the first round. Thank you for listening.